Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Melanie Beauty. We're going to get right on into it. I found this cute little coffee table at Habitat Humanity Restore for only $3. So I'm going to give it a complete makeover and I'm thinking of trying to go on the more modern side, give it some fresh new knobs or handles and paint it a more brighter color, possibly an off-white. Um, as you can see, it's very dirty, lots of cobwebs, so this is going to need a lot of prepping before I can even start to paint. So I'm going to start by removing the pulls from the cabinet doors so I can fill those holes up and add new knobs. These were very easy to remove. I just had to use a Phillips screwdriver to pry them off. I love how these are so ornate looking and vintage. I'll probably be using them for a different project in the future. Now I'm taking a wet rag with a little bit of soap and water and I'm just giving this whole piece a really good wipe down and just cleaning it up so my paint could adhere nice and smoothly. Once my piece is nice and dry, I'm gonna go in with my circular sander and I'm gonna give this whole top surface a nice good scuffing so my paint can have something to hold on to. Um, usually you want to go with the grain of the wood, but as you can see, mine is going in like this diamond effect, so I kind of just went all over the place, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure what type of material this is. I don't have that type of knowledge yet to, you know, detect the veneer versus the wood versus MDF. But um, yeah, so I'm taking off as much as I can and I'm also going to do the sides and the doors as well. And once I'm done sanding, I'm going in with a clean wet rag and I'm just wiping off all of that dust and debris to make sure that my surface is clean. Now it's time to repair any nicks and damages to the wood and also fill up those holes. So I'm using this drywall filler. I didn't have any wood filler at the time. However, this did seem to get the job done. Here is my little kitty, Selena, checking everything out. Once that filler was completely dry, I came back out and I just sanded it down very fine and smoothly with some sandpaper. Um, I'm not sure of the grit that I use, but once that was nice and smoothly sanded, I went back with another wet rag and just wiped everything down and cleaned it up a bit. Now, once it was time to prime, I did go through some trial and error, but everything turned out. So I had the crazy idea to use white chalk paint as my primer. And usually that would have been okay, but with this particular piece, the um, natural color of the wood kept peeking through and bleeding through, which I knew could have been a possible thing to happen so once all this had dried I still kept seeing that yellowish tint peeking through so I had to go to the store and buy some real primer I picked up this Zinsser bullseye water base multi primer and sealer unfortunately this too did not really seal that bleed through that I was getting and I knew initially exactly what primer I was supposed to be using, which is the Zinsser Bin Primer Shellac Base. 
um, but I could not find that in any of my stores. But eventually I did find the spray can of it. I would have preferred the paint in the gallon, but it was very, very expensive and I just didn't want to put that much money into this piece. But the spray paint ended up working just as fine. And this is what did the trick to this piece. I didn't see any more bleed through. Now what I don't recommend you to do is to leave the hinges on and the hardware for the cabinets. I would definitely remove them next time when I'm painting just for a more cleaner look. But this day I was just being really lazy. It was super cold outside and I just wanted to get it painted. So I'm also going in with the same primer for the inside of the cabinet trying to get a nice good even layer inside and I am wearing a mask to protect myself. And by this time the outer side was dry so I went in with a second coat of this shellac base primer. And while my piece was drying, I began to prep my paint. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in Chiffon Cream. And I'm gonna be putting it inside of this container, which is going to be connected to my new spray gun. I'm also gonna be using some water to thin it out a bit. Gonna give this can a really good shake to make sure it's fully incorporated. And here is that pretty cream color. And my spray gun did come with these filters. However, um, they just took entirely way too long to filter out the paint and I didn't feel like waiting. So I ended up just pouring my paint directly into the container usually you want to filter it out to make sure you don't get any clogs inside of your gun but we're not waiting I believe I used about a three-quarter cup of water to really thin out my paint to make sure that it went on very smoothly and didn't clog my gun then I gave this a really good shake you want to almost get the consistency of milk. Once that was done, it was time to paint. Now, before I add my final coat of paint, I'm going in with this 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just lightly scuffing up the surface and just getting rid of any little lumps and bumps that may have happened from that spray can of the shellac primer. Once it was sanded, I went in with a clean wet rag and I wiped all of the debris off and made sure it was nice and clean for my paint. And here is the paint spray I'll be using. I picked it up off of Amazon. I'll leave it in the description box below. It was my first time using this and after, you know, Getting used to the different spray nozzles and the paint flow, I think I like it. Um, definitely have to have more practice with it to get an even spray. The only thing that I was skeptical about is that the spray came out kind of splotchy to me. But then once I let the paint completely dry, I realized that the paint was like self-leveling and it evened out by itself. So I guess that was normal. I definitely need more experience with the gun before I can give a really good full review. But this piece did turn out very good and my paint did go on very smoothly and I'm definitely going to keep it. I will say it was kind of difficult to get the inside because it is a little bit of a tight space, but I ended up getting a good coverage for the inside.
Once I let that piece dry for a few hours, I came back with the Rust-Oleum two times coverage semi-gloss clear coat and I gave the entire piece a nice thin layer of this sealer. Once this first layer was dry of the semi-gloss, I did go back with my water-based polycrylic and I added it just to the top for extra security and protection. Now I finally brought this piece upstairs on my balcony to finish. I am going to add one last layer of this semi-gloss just to the top and then we'll be able to move on to the next step. Now I'm so glad I ended up finishing that piece just in time because this happened the next morning. For the new poles, I'm going to be using these Project 62 brass poles from Target. I think the gold metallic look looks really good against the cream off-white paint. Now let's get a good look at the before of this coffee table. And now the after. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you want to see more videos of me flipping furniture, leave a comment down below.